Good morning. We welcome you to worship with the Universalist Unitarian Church of Peoria. I'm Amy Pop, and I serve this congregation as its credentialed lifespan religious educator. We know you come from different backgrounds, different religions, and different beliefs. We know you come here for different reasons, to find community, to seek your spiritual and personal truths, to nurture your heart and soul, to find comfort, to explore new ideas, and perhaps to find the answers to some of your bigger questions. We hope you will find comfort, connection, challenge, and love here. Our guest speaker today is Gary Moore. Mr. Moore is a programming radio consultant for WPNV 106.3 FM, former TV anchor, poet, playwright, community activist, drummer, storyteller, African-American history teacher, and entrepreneur. What a blessing to hear his voice and wisdom in our worship on the second day of Kwanzaa. If you are new to this congregation, I invite you to help us get to know you. At the end of this service will be the link for our coffee hour on Zoom. All are invited to the conversation. Please send a note to the church office for more information. This congregation continues to be sustained by the care, talents, and generous gifts of our members and friends. If you'd like to make a financial gift, see the link in the chat or the slide at the end of the service. Now, let us enter into worship. Circle round for freedom, circle round for peace, for all of us imprisoned, circle for release, circle for the planet, children keep the circle whole circle round for freedom circle round for peace for all of us in Good morning.
morning and Merry Christmas to you all. The opening words for today are, Be Still With Me and Enter by the Reverend Marta I. Valentin. Be still with me and enter into the crescent fold of my arm as I gather you to this time and space. Wind your thoughts like a river toward the center of who we are this morning as one body out among the others in the world. Be still with me and enter into the celebration of resilience and resurrection. For we are vessels eternally rising out of the water, alive with a purpose and a strength unknown. And be still with me and enter quietly into this place of unbound love and gratitude. Our chalice lighting is from the International Council of Unitarian Universalists. This is a global chalice lighting created by Reverend Brian Keeley, a Canadian minister and past president of the ICUU. In times of darkness, we stumble towards the tiny flame. In times of cold, we seek the warming fire. In times of repression, we reach for the lamp of truth. In times of loss, we pray for the comforting light. In times of joy, we light a candle of celebration. Spirit of life, as we kindle this light, help us find what we need this day. Like a ship lost out to sea, sliding far away, far away from me. So like a ship that's run aground, grinding over sand, lost but also found.
beneath the hustle and bustle, beneath the stream of thoughts that clambers and chatters over the landscape of our interior world, beneath our habits of momentum and stirring, there is a stillness, deep and peaceful, the place where creation begins. Who lives there? We know her by many names. Truth, love, God, wisdom. We turn our hearts toward her face, toward the mystery, and bring our prayers of awe, of longing, of hope, of exhaustion. She holds us in our grief, in our anger, in our disappointment, our loneliness, our rebirth. From her viewpoint, she sees us, children of the stillness, children of love. She sees our place in the order of things, joined together in the larger story, and she invites us again and again into living. Invites us into loving. Invites us into being loved. May we be restored to wholeness and blessed with peace. May all those whom we encounter receive this blessing through our being in the world. Shine on me, oh shine on me. Let the light from the lighthouse Shine on me, oh, shine on me, yes, shine on me. Let the light from the lighthouse shine on me. Lift me up. Let the light from the lighthouse lift me up, oh, lift me up, yes, lift me up. Let the light from the lighthouse lift me up. Oh, hold, hold me close, yes, hold me close. Let the light from the lighthouse hold me close, yes, hold me close, oh, hold me close. Let the light from the lighthouse please hold me close. So oh, shine, shine on me, shine on me. Yes, shine on me. Let the light from the lighthouse shine on me. Shine on me, yes, shine on me. Let the light from the lighthouse shine on me.
Who jumbo ma bibi na ma buana? Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Gary Moore, and it is indeed my pleasure to once again join you for your Kwanzaa celebration at the Universalist Unitarian Church. You know, these are COVID times, and so we're all taking precautions these days. Hopefully, your family has been safe, and if you've had anyone who's been impacted by the virus, you have my heartfelt empathy as we are all trying to cope with the coronavirus and taking it seriously, wearing masks, wearing protections, washing our hands regularly, maintaining social distance, and getting a flu shot in this flu season as we try to prevent the surge on top of a surge and combat some of the mixed messages that we have received. Kwanzaa for me has been something very personal since I was a child growing up in Chicago. I was about eight years old when I uh, discovered that Dr. Milana Karinga had developed this holiday that celebrates African Americans' connection to Africa. Uh, Dr. Milana Karinga is featured in a picture over here in this basket. Before I start with any storytelling, I wanted to explain some of the things that are on the table. This is a fruit basket. Kwanzaa uh, means first fruit, the first fruit of the harvest. And when Dr. Karinga came up with the holiday, he thought about us harvesting knowledge and us maintaining a connection with Africa through some of the African cultures and traditions. And he was a Pan-Africanist. He borrowed from all over the continent. So in Kwanzaa, in the holiday, you'll see elements from East Africa, West Africa, South Africa, North Africa. Swahili is the language that he chose for Kwanzaa, and Swahili is an East African language, even though it, is, it has been documented that African Americans, for the most part, uh, their ancestors came from the Western part of Africa. Also on the table, you'll see this mat, the Kikumbe Cha Umoja, which is the uh, unity cup. You'll see the seven candles of Kwanzaa, which represent the seven principles. So Kwanzaa, as you know, is a seven day holiday that starts the day after Christmas and lasts till New Year's Day. And each day carries a principle. The first day of Kwanzaa, we symbolize with the black candle in the middle, that's Umoja. Umoja is unity. The second candle is Kujichagalia. So that's the day we're celebrating today. Kujichagalia is self-determination. The third day of Kwanzaa is Ujima, collective work and responsibility. The fourth day of Kwanzaa, we would light this candle and that would be Ujama, cooperative economics. Fifth day of Kwanzaa is Nia, which is purpose. The sixth day of Kwanzaa is Kuumba, which is creativity. And then the final day of Kwanzaa is Imani, which is faith. I gotta tell you a quick little story. I was doing a Kwanzaa presentation uh, way back, oh, I don't know, early 2000s. It was bitterly cold, like 10 below zero, and hardly anybody came out. An organization was given, and they said, we're gonna go ahead and do it anyway. And only seven kids showed up for this Kwanzaa celebration. And so one by one, I just kind of randomly said, okay, you come up and you light the first candle, and what's your name? And you come up and you light the second one, and we talked about the principles. And then I'm looking around and then the, finally the last kid came up and I said, you come up and you light the last candle. And I said, what's your name? And she said, Imani. And Imani is the uh, final day of Kwanzaa. So I thought that was very appropriate. All right, I'm going to do something here. I am going to show you some other symbols. This uh, cane that I have is something I picked up in Chicago. And if you see here, there's a bird. It's called the Sankofa bird. It's a symbol in Ghana, where the bird is reaching back, but he's going forward. And the idea is that as you go into the future, you learn from your past. And what Dr. Kar uh, Karinga was attempting to do was to have African Americans connect with their African past. Think about how we were cut off from our ancestry. And we know about Alex Haley, right, with Roots. 
and we have this book here, Roots by Alex Haley. Think about the, the years that Alex Haley toiled trying to find his mother's mother's mother, his father's 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 father. And it eventually landed him in Gambia, West Africa. And we know the story of Kunta Kinte, right? Well, nowadays you have DNA where you can just take a cotton swab, put it in your mouth and send it to a laboratory. And I did that and I'm very pleased to show you, I searched my ancestry and on my mother's side, uh, the ancestry comes from the Bamileki people living in Cameroon. And I shared this with a Bradley University professor and she had been to Cameroon and she gave me this outfit from Cameroon. Uh, so thank you very much for that. And then the other on my father's side, the Igbo people from Nigeria and the Mabundu people in Angola. So I traced my ancestry that way. Black people in the United States have, as you know, had a, a tough time with slavery, uh, Jim Crow, crack cocaine, unemployment, poverty, now with the coronavirus, uh, just some of everything. And it's, it's difficult, I think, for us to find hope in traditional American culture. So what Dr. Karinga was saying was that, hey, you know what? You have a rich history. There's a lot of stuff that you can go back into Africa and pull out that will edify you, that will make you feel good about yourself. And so I just wanted to, first of all, celebrate. If you're out there, maybe you can clap your hands like this. Okay, all right. <laughs> so that's a nice little celebration song, right? And we come from, we come from a people, we come from, we come from a people who lived a long time ago in Africa, don't you know? We come from a people who lived a long time ago. come from a people who lived a long time ago in Africa, don't you know? We come from a people who lived a long time ago in Africa, don't you know? from a people who lived a long time ago in Africa, don't you know? Did you know that all of us are African? Did you know that when they trace the DNA of every human being on the planet from different regions, Italians, Chinese, etc., etc., it all came back to this one black woman in Africa. So we are all Africans. Africa is the cradle of civilization, right? It is the birthplace of humanity. And we celebrate that so we can all join in in that celebration. I want to tell just two stories because I know our time is limited. And one of the stories, I enjoy playing this kalimba. This is a story about a house. 
is a very beautiful house with beautiful doors, beautiful windows, and beautiful lights. And one day somebody came along and said, you know, the doors on that house look really nice on that house. I think I want to take those doors to my house. So they came and they took them. And then somebody else came along and said, you know, the lights on that house look really nice on that house. I think I want to take those lights to my house. So they came and they took them. And then somebody else came along and said, you know, the windows on that house look really nice on that house. I think I want to take those windows to my house. So they came. And they took them. And then finally somebody came along and said, you know, the people in that house worked really hard on that house. I think I want to take those people to my house. So they came. And they took them. So what do you think the house looks like now? Does it have any door? Does it have any windows? Does it have any light? Uh, no. Is it a beautiful house? Some people will say no, but oh, wait a minute. They say when something is beautiful, it's not always what you have, but what you give. So if you look down the street, you'll see the doors from that house at one house. You see the lights from that house at another house. You see the windows from that house at another house. And so it's a very beautiful house because of what it gave to the other houses. And the name of that house is Africa. Thank you for listening. Now, the reason why I like telling the story about the house, there's a book that I have around here somewhere uh, by Walter Rodney, and it's called How Europe Underdeveloped Africa. And in this book, he talks about the diamond mines and the De Beers family in South Africa. And he talks about uh, the, the, the Harvey Firestone making a deal with King Leopold of the Congo to start, you know, this rubber. And you know, we think about Firestone tires and, and uh, rubber diamonds, gold, that whole uh, west coast of Africa used to be called the Gold Coast. Um, all these precious minerals and resources that were raped from Africa. And then, of course, the people that were taken. And we forget that. Randall Robinson says that the cost of that is incalculable. You know, how can you even put a price on on that? And so when we talk about the people, as I mentioned before with Roots, we're all familiar with the story of Kunta Kinte. My dear friend, late friend Charles Hunter, uh, painted that picture of Kunta Kinte, portrayed by Le LeVar uh, Burton, of course, from the movie Roots. But it's been estimated that some 100 million Africans, when you think about those who were taken and their descendants, uh, there were more people who were taken to Brazil than were taken to the United States. And so you have millions of people who were displaced. And I don't like to use the term the slaves because the slaves sounds too much like the tables or the chairs. It doesn't sound like people. We forget that these were people. Uh, he was the hunter who captured the boar. Uh, she sold the outfits the school children wore. These three are Igbo, experts at trade. He was so proud of the drum his son made. 
She was a queen, don't take her to task. And we Bamaleki wore the elephant mask. He wore the tall stilts with the bugaraboo. And at the market, she'd say, no, buy one, you buy two. Bambara, he said, God come from seed. Falani, she take only just what she need. For him to be quiet, there must be a plot. And those three over there, they argue a lot. She had a smile as wide as an ocean. He'd heal your body with herbs and a potion. A champion wrestler, he had nothing to prove. Guinea girl, was a dancer. Now she hardly can move. Iron replaces her bracelets of gold. For 12 rifles, her whole family was sold. She just cry and she cry. She wonders if her little brother escaped. She was a cook known for her stew. He was a crook and a fast talker too. He could make or fix anything, metal or wood. And her yam crop this year was better than good. When his daughters got married, he got a whole herd of goats. They found his daughters hiding in fishermen boats. Guinea girl, she just cry and she cry. We give her our scraps because she carry a kid. Malenki, he cry because he know what he did. Ashanti, Dahomey, and others did raids for the whites. Babalao say guilty must make sacrifice. The chief say he not guilty. Let his captives keep pride. Now the chief and his captives are all side by side. They curse at each other about their long tribal war. Say it's hard to forget what it be like before. Elder, he teach us the tongue of each other. Say it's time for us to come together as sisters and brothers. We start out with many, but we lose every day. In the whispers of night, we sing songs and we pray. The people who were enslaved. In 1997, I was asked to come and present for the Universalist Unitarian Church. Man, it's hard to imagine. It was 23 years ago. I think I did something before then, but I, the earliest thing that I have written is from 23 years ago when the Universalist Unitarian Church asked me to come present. And I went back and I found this, and I think it's relevant today. And I just wanted to read some of it to you. Kwanzaa with the UUs, 1997. I'm gonna add a little bit to this. This romance with Africa, this romance with lost languages and cultures and religions, at worst, this grasping at straws known as Kwanzaa, at best, this affirmation of identity, this attempt to reconcile, to reconnect, to affirm what we hope is there, what we know to be true. True, yes, that we are victims of the diaspora, 
children of Africa scattered across the world, sharing the blood of the mother, the commonality of suffering, the unity of struggle, the bond of pain, taking on a foreign language with no idea what language your mother's father's mother's father's mother's father spoke, what gods he, she, or they worshiped, what was their occupation, or what was their lost nation. Siku Sandiata says, we are a nation within a nation looking for a nationality. Having to research and research, go outside history books to catch a glimpse at your former majesty, your beauty, before counseling and Prozac were common. Having to sing the blues in your quest for beauty. Having to find yourself in garage sale pictures of Du Bois and Marcus Garvey. Les McCann says, we're trying to make it real compared to what? Compared to everyday American life in the trenches, in a neo-colonial state, trying to make it real for yourself or your children. But the Nguzo Saba, the seven principles of Kwanzaa, always seem to take a back seat to the Jackson Five, now boys to men. Little ears of corn don't want to listen to anything but little Kim. And even though Tupac is dead, our children believe him more of a hero than Sinke and Martin and Rosa and Harriet. Burn me a candle for Emoja. Africa, unite and see that we do share the struggle so much so that we could rally around each other to protect each other from capitalist dictators, the sneaky CIA and KGB, the Sunni Abatis, the Mobutu Sese Sekus, the AIDS epidemic, the coronavirus the multinationals that take in billions in oil, wood, diamonds, and bananas while you are hypnotized by television and other forms of popular entertainment. What's behind the big black curtain? Hiding your identity, the real you, the one that speaks so softly you have to turn down the bass in your car, your way of saying, look, I'm here. The you that was you before you knew you. The you that was free from TV, conventional values, and fad identities, the one who challenges you to peel the onion, clean the mirror, scrub the mind, and find the essence. The one who can then embrace race without dilemma, who can fight for justice without hatred, who can see clearly without the psychic network. Yes, give me Kuji Chagalia, mixed up with some Imani too. Give me seven days to meditate, eliminate the populist waste from my mind. Time to harvest the knowledge of the past year, harvest the hope, harvest the all that is, saying to the rest of the world, learn from us about overcoming adversity, about survival, about patience, about revolution, retro nouveau identity, recreation of values, and struggle. Yes, the strong black coffee is diluted with the cream of assimilation, but there's also appreciation. Because part of Kwanzaa's libation statement states that we must acknowledge those who have struggled on our behalf. So we swallow our pride and open our eyes and open our holiday and see that maybe, just maybe, we don't have to stand alone. There are others like yourself who stand with us. We have friends with whom we can celebrate, friends who we hope can truly appreciate Kwanzaa. Asante Sana, thank you very much.
We leave this gathered community, but we don't leave our connection, our concerns, or our care for each other. And our service to each other, to the world, and to our UU faith continues. Until we are together again, my UU family, be strong, be true, be loving, and be safe. So be it.